Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And this is the twelfth lecture of general toxicology. Mm -hmm. And this in this lecture, I'll be discussing the analytical techniques which are used in forensic toxicology. The analytical toxicology is most important branch of, branch of forensic uh, medicine, forensic sciences, because it deals with the detection and the estimation of most of the poisons in biological and other materials even in very low concentration. And the most important proof that poisoning has occurred, it depends upon the evidence of absorption of a toxic substance in the body. That means we have to prove that this poison or this drug or this chemical which is not the normal constituent of the human body. It is present within the body, it is detected in the blood and the tissues and the level of its presence is up to the toxic level. So the direct evidence of such absorption is the detection of that toxic substance followed by quantitative estimation of the tissue. That means not only the qualitative estimation that is the testing what type of chemical it is but quantitative up to which level it is present and that is obtained from the tissues which we receive at autopsy sometimes in the blood, urine and gastric material which is received uh, by the uh, medical legal examination of the living persons. The most common poisons which are detected they are the insecticides, the pesticides, the poisonous plants like the Tura, Aconite, Nux vomica, Opium and other wild herbs. Then the sedatives, tranquilizers, other, other drugs like parastamol, aspirin, they are commonly misused and they are detected. The poisoning, to prove poisoning as a possible cause of death is only possible when you uh, search keenly the scene of crime from where you can get the prescription, the medicines and then the history of the case, the autopsy findings and the gross and the microscopic findings. The analysis is uh, facilitated when such an information is available from the scene of crime and history which is gained or gathered by, from the friends or the relative. Then the analysis becomes easier and it is facilitated. Because when we know the specific substance which is suspected as a cause of death, then the direct analysis for this substance can be done. And this will either confirm the substance or either it will rule out the substance. In addition to chemical analysis, other examinations like histopathological, biochem biochemical, serological, they they also become necessary in forensic toxicology and for that matter blood is useful in all but except histopathological examination because for histopathological examination we need the tissues and blood will be helpful in toxicological analysis, biochemical, serological analysis and if Embalming was to be performed because embalming solution contains formalin and other ingredients, chemicals. Then before to perform embalming, uh, we should get the samples for the uh, various tests because the embalming process will interfere with the quantitative and qualitative estimation of the poisons. For example, cyanide will react with the formalin and form will form 
un unidentifiable substance. Now, what is anal analytical toxicology? The analytical toxicology is the branch of to toxicology that deals with all the analytical methods and procedures which are used for the detection and estimation of different toxins in the tissues and the body fluids. The systemic and chemical analysis which includes the preliminary examination, then the isolation of the poisonous substance, then its identification and then its quantification, that the qualitative and quantitative, both for this poison. For the prim preliminary examination, we should note down about the physical characteristics of the sample, such as the chemistry, consistency, the appearance, color, smell, pH, or any other foreign body if it is present. So all the characteristics, physical, which are visible to the naked eye, they should be noted down. And most important thing is that the one third of the original sample should be preserved because sometime it is possible for the future reference use. Now what are the common, uh, commonly used analytical techniques? They are the steam distillation, star sort of process, chromatography, liquid, gas and thin layer chromatography, all types. Then spectroscopy, electrophoresis, they are the most commonly method used. Now for isolation of the substance, the poisons are grouped according to the method used for their isolation because the scheme is that they are either the noxious gases or the volatile substances or non-volatile substances then become the process of identification and quantification. For qualitative tests, the color tests like the Trinder's test, Rennish test, and the Marsh test. The Tinder test is basically a urine spot test and this is done with the Tinder reagent which is mixed with the patient urine and the color change is immediate. This is qualitative determination of the presence of salicylates commonly the 10% of ferric chloride solution is used. If salicylates are present, the solution will change to brown or purple color. That you uh, pour few drops of this uh, tender solution into 1 ml of the urine and immediately brown or purple thing will appear. Now the Rennish test, the other color test. This test is initially indicated to detect the presence of heavy metals in the biological samples. And this is the test which is performed to confirm the presence of metallic poisons like arsenic, mercury in the suspe uh, suspected solutions. And to perform the test, we need copper foil, a sublimation tube, beaker, and other test materials. We take the suspected material in a china dish and put a copper foil in it and boil it with the boiling point when the till the boiling point is reached. And you will notice the blackish discoloration on the copper foil in case of arsenic or mercury poisoning. Now, Put this copper foil in the sublimation tube and heat it gently through the bottom of the tube till you notice the fumes in the tube. And in case of arsenic or mercury presence, these fumes will stick to the bottom of the tube and appear as shiny particles. 
and when you observe this sublimation tube under microscope the arsenic will be seen as crystals of black color and the mercury will be seen as bracts black circular deposit it is confirmatory test for the metallic poisons like arsenic and mercury now the mass test in 1936 a chemist james morse developed the mass test which could identify minute amount of arsenic in the food and in human remains it is very sensitive test for the detection of arsenic and the test works on the basis of oxidation and reduction chemical reactions using zinc and sulfuric acid to create arsine gas this is highly sensitive to even small levels of arsenic now about the thin layer chromatography this is a technique which involves the movement of capillary action of the liquid phase that is the organic solvent through a thin uniform layer of stationary phase which is the silica gel held on a rigid support that is the beaker so the compounds are separated by partition between mobile and stationary phases now the quantitative ass assessment for quantitative ass assessment of the poison we use the ultraviolet spectroscope spectrometry gas chromatography radio amine immune assay neutron activation analysis when we talk about the chromatography it is a versatile method of separating many different kinds of chemical mixtures and this is a technique used to separate a mixture of substances and this is based on the principle of differences in the relative affinities of substances for two different media now about the types of chromatography it is absorption chromatography gas chromatography high pressure liquid chromatography ion exchange chromatography liquid chromatography paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography now a detail uh, about the thin layer chromatography thin layer chromatography is a process of separating non volatile substances and thin layer chromatography is performed by the following following technique and the items the a thin plate of aluminum foil coated with silica gel which is an adsorbent and this is known as stationary phase and it is a polar plate that is this is a plate made up of aluminum which is coated with a silica gel and on this the test material is applied which moves upward that is the movement phase but this is the stationary phase then a beaker containing the solvent or the mobile phase which is a non polar substance usually hepatene is used first of all take an aluminum plate with silica gel coated on it and this is as i've told you this is the stationary phase then draw two lines with the pencil one at the bottom and one at the top which is the end point the bottom is the starting point and the top is the end point then place a drop of substance or the mixture to be determined on the start line then let it dry for few seconds then place this plate in the beaker containing that solvent or mobile phase make sure that the starting line with the substance does not dip in the solvent it should not dip only the 
plate should touch so that its solvent should absorb and rise upward. So this is how you can see the beaker, the thin chromatography plate, the watch glass is put on the top and the solvent is in the beaker. The spot is applied on the uh, lower pencil line. Now we will cover this beaker and wait for the reaction to take place. Now as the solvent travels up the silica gel with the capillary action, the different components of the dye mixer travel at different rates and the mixture is separated into different colored spots that is the mobile phase. This solvent is allowed to rise until it almost reaches the top plate, top line of the plate. That will give the maximum separation of the dye components for this particular combination of solvent and the stationary phase. You can see the different level of the spots. And this is the whole process showing the spots are applied, the solvent phase is rising up the uh, plate and the different spots they are separated. And this is how it appears. Then the, uh, we determine the RF value. RF value is the distance traveled by the component divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. And this RF value will be different for different ingredients. So you can see the distance traveled by the solvent and distance traveled by various dyes. So this will determine the RF value. So the advantages of thin layer chromatic chromatography is that it is economical, it is, consumes less time, simple apparatus and it is highly sensitive. Now putrefaction and toxicological analysis because, because of putrefaction which will interfere with the toxicological analysis. Because certain substances can be identified even during putrefaction like heavy metals from the hair, nail, for example, arsenic, mercury, lead, polyanders, nicotine, and organophosphorus. Volatile substance cannot be identified in the putrefied form. So thank you very much. This was all about the toxicological techniques which are used for the analysis of the different poisons. It's a huge topic. There are many techniques for your basic understanding. I have only enumerated few. Thank you very much.